Okay, here is the definition of inharmonicity, at least according to Arthur Riblets. And I'm going to try to characterize inharmonicity by looking at the C1, C2, and C3 keys on three different, actually four different pianos. The, the last one there is a digital piano. Okay, let's take a look here. Let's take a look at a Steinway C1. There's the spectrum. You can see there's a grouping of spectra here of the partials. Every eighth one is diminished here, here, over here, and over here. Probably a consequence of the fact that the key was struck at about an eighth or a ninth of its speaking length. Okay, here is the same spectra, the same spectra of the partials, the black lines, with a backdrop of red lines showing the harmonics. So down here is the fundamental harmonic. Here's the second harmonic. And in these low ranges, you see a couple of things. First of all, as we've commented earlier, the fundamental strength, the fundamental partial strength, is not particularly high. And also, the separation between the partials and the fundamentals, the red lines, tends to pick up as you go out into higher frequencies. Now, let's take a closer look at this. Uh, about eight eight partials at a time. Okay, here's the first set. Here is the fundamental at 32.7 hertz. Here's some strength not at the fundamental. Here's some strength at the fundamental. Here's the second har harmonic and the second partial. The partial is in black. The red is the harmonic. Now at the third partial we see some strength. And we start to see, really, not, we don't start to see any separation on this grouping. Let's take a look at the next eight. You can see the black start to separate a little bit from the red. The black is the strength of the partials. The red is the harmonic location. <clears throat> and now we start to get more and more separation, such that it's kind of difficult to associate a partial with the harmonic it's deviating from. And here's some more, some more, more. And now here is <clears throat> a picture of the actual partial frequencies plotted against the theoretical harmonic frequencies. And if we did not have in the harmonicity, then these black circles would line up on top of the red line. But, as you can see, they start to deviate as they go up into high frequencies because the separation between adjacent partials is starting to be greater than the fundamental. Now here's another way of looking at it. And this is I take the differences between the partials and I plot them on this axis. And then I still plot frequency along the x-axis. And the black line with the black circles are the differences between adjacent partials. And they start to go up. It's also erratic because of the, the noise in the system. The red line is the difference between the harmonics, and it is constant at 32.7 hertz because each harmonic is an integer multiple of the fundamental. Now let's put a a trend curve through that for later reference. That's the red line. The green line is still the differences of the harmonics. The red line shows the differences between the partials. Now here is a more detailed look at that curve, that trend curve. And it's, here's the formula I use. The differences between the partials, differences between the harmonics, divided by the fundamental frequency. So it starts out at zero and it departs as much as 25% over here at the higher frequencies. 
Okay. I think we don't need to do any more. Let's actually plot them of all the ones I collected data on. Okay, here is the composite plot of all the different uh, keys I looked at. The black refers to the C1. You can see here are four black curves. Circles are for the Yamaha console, which I have. The plus marks refer to my Kanabi. The solid black line is the Steinway that I visited at the local music school, which is over six feet. I referred to it in previous threads as a Steinway 171, but it's not 171 centimeters. It's over six feet. Here the blue are the C2s. Again, the circles for the Yamaha console that I have. The, black, the solid line is for the Steinway. The uh, plus sign is for the Kanabi. And the little dotted line down here is for the uh, Yamaha P120, which is a digital piano that I have. And then finally, here are the, the red curves represent the C3. Here, for example, the Steinway and the Kanabi are right on top of each other. Here is the Yamaha, the dotted line is the Yamaha P120, and the circles are the Yamaha console. Okay, I'm going to try to reconstruct a couple of sounds based on the observed strengths that I got from the spectrum, and also the actual partial frequencies. I'm going to add up 54 of these strengths from each partial. partial. So let's go to back to MATLAB. Okay, the first one is the Steinway C1. noise was the reconstructed signal using the partials. The third noise was the reconstructed signal using the harmonics, but using the strengths that I gathered at the partials. Let's do it one more time. <clears throat> this is for a C3 now. from the partials. That's using the, the strings at the partials, but using the harmonics, harmonic frequencies. Okay, uh, in this video I, I tried to characterize in the harmonicity by the, looking at these trend curves, which in turn come from looking at the occurrence of the partials in the frequency domain. And then here is that somewhat subtle formula I use to calculate those trend curves. And you can see here are the differences in the partials, and those are the ones that have this greater separation as you go higher in frequency. Here are the differences in the harmonic frequencies, and those are constant. They're always equal to the fundamental by definition. And it's all normalized by the fundamental frequency. Now, the other conclusion you might come to is the reconstruction ex experiment that I did suggests that the inharmonicity seems to take a slight difference. But again, that test is a little bit flaky. So, uh, that concludes the uh, video. Thank you for watching and listening.